Welcome to another episode of Threads of Enlightenment. As usual, I know that my guests present with a couple of things that I deem very expensive. First, their time. And I want to thank you, Doc, for coming and spending and sharing some of this precious commodity with us because I know the value that it is. The second is your journey, your life. It houses pain, joy, uh, all of those different things, darkness and light. And we thank you that you feel honored to come and to share it with us. And we want to thank you and have a heart of gratitude as we hear your journey so that we can become better human spirits while we're here on this planet. Doc, thank you for coming to Threads of Enlightenment. Well, Ken, thank you for inviting me. I look forward to our conversation today and what I can share with your listeners. I look forward to it. I want you to tell them about who you are, where you're from as far as books and the, the I tell them those things that you have created so far, because I tell them a creator in a couple of months from now, they will add to it because they're constantly growing and gaining wisdom and insights and all of that stuff. So they're always adding to what they have to today. So tell them a little about some of the things that you have created so far. Oh, well, that would probably take several hours right there, Ken. Um, <laughs> You know, when we create, we create beginning with a thought, as you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everything that is around us began as thought. And, you know, you'll hear something like, and in the beginning was the word. Okay. Yes. And so the same is true of each of us as we create. So as I've gone through my life of many decades, I've watched the various forms of creation that I've manifested. And I will mm -hmm. tell you, I was not off to the best of starts in my life. Mm -hmm. So well, part of what I will share is my journey to get from where I was to where I am today, which looks like two very different lives, but it's actually the same one. And I love your title of your program, Threads of Enlightenment, because these were the threads that ran through my life that took me to where I am today. And so my yes, life began on the East Coast. And nice. moved westward. And mm -hmm. every time I moved, it brought a new level of enlightenment. And we can talk nice. about that as we go through our session today. Uh, definitely. Uh, one of the things, there's a purpose behind that title. I absolutely believe everything that you said. There is this thread that it runs in between our lives. And that thread runs in. I believe that we are independent. We should be independent, learning about the self. But I believe also we should be interdependent. And there's this thread that runs within all of that. And it is a beautiful uh, thing to know and understand and see the uniqueness in that uh, approach. Talk to us now about your, the first, you mentioned that you, you were different from where you are. We want to go back to your beginning. Talk to us about your family upbringing your place of residence, your family, that type of um, scenario, and how did you begin to form your belief system from uh, your family? Well, um, my family was what we would call lower middle class. Uh, my father delivered mail for his entire work life. My mother mm -hmm. was what we refer to as a housewife. She stayed at home and raised four children of which I was number two. And mm -hmm. uh, because of our background, we all attended parochial school back east in Pittsburgh. And mm -hmm. I still remember, Ken, uh, every morning they would begin with one hour of religion. And mm -hmm. first you'd start with going to mass. And then after that, you came to school and you had another hour of formal yeah. religious education. And I remember having nuns and they talked about what life was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And they told us all about free will. And right after they would tell us about free will, they would tell us <laughs> how we were supposed to live our lives that uh -huh. seemed somewhat contrary to having free will. Yeah. And I would always question in my mind, you know, the, the truth behind that. Mm -hmm. I, as, as a six-year-old, I questioned all of this. Wow. And so those seeds within me for questioning uh, occurred very early in life. They were not encouraged by the adults around me, but they were mm -hmm. always there. And I think that was one of my gifts 
that yeah. constant journey for the truth. And so I think that's um, important. Yes, I went to school back there and mm-hmm. I uh, went to the University of Pittsburgh, where I received a degree in psychology and then another degree in special education uh, that led me to working with the blind for 34 mm. years in schools for the blind across the country. And when I moved to Arizona, I continued my education, didn't think I would, uh, earning mm. another master's degree in counseling and then going on for a PhD. So that was my educational journey. And yeah. I w- was truly blessed with having the intelligence in order to accomplish those degrees that allowed me to move forward in my life. They gave me more opportunity. Mm-hmm. I love the, the the inquisitiveness of your your uh, the being of you, that at such a young age that you began to question the approach of the nurses, the, the nuns versus the, um, with the topic of the free will, and then um, beginning to program you to contain that free will. And that's one of the things that always fascinate me about uh, society and religion as a, as a whole, uh, the free will. One of the, my favorite scriptures in the Bible is, come, let's reason together, because that to me shows that I should come with my faculty intact and my ability to ask questions as to and to have a discussion even with God himself. And so I think um, that's a fascinating outlook to see where the nuns were leading, leading you after having this discussion about free will. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> that free will yeah. uh, resulted in a number of um, swats on the behind yeah. and uh, <laughs> rulers across the knuckles when I yeah. would question. But it never <laughs> stopped me. It never deterred yeah. me. That was more important than their attempts to change yeah. that approach to free will. I think it's important to have an inquisitiveness about why, uh, about life, about the process, the ability to create. Uh, my audience know that I tell them and talk about creating. And um, I know that society on the whole, they teach us that we ought to be panicking when the dark times come, but I believe different. I tell people that the dark times help you to see the creator within you if you bring yourself into the space by which you can see it. And that takes a shift with your, within your perception as to your darkness. And when you switch your perception as to that situation, it no longer is darkness. It is purposeful, um, pain, as if you wish, um, you are now looking at that differently and looking at to how can I utilize this, change my perception of this, it will change your energy, it will change everything about you as you look at that situation and allows your creative mind come into place. Talk to us, Doc, as you began to train yourself, uh, you were moving in in school and as you uh, this inquisitive child began to uh, train him, himself how to understand the mind of man, the, the process by which we um, receive the thought and then walk it through our being and manifest it into the, uh, our life and man, uh, our manner, our, the way we live. Talk to us about this young boy as he begins to move through his life? Well, not by accident, Ken, that two Mm -hmm. of my majors were psychology and counseling. Mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated by the human mind. And, you know, what makes people tick? Why do people make the decisions that they make? What is that based on? And we know now that it's based on their story. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about all of this is that at any given moment, you can choose to change your story. And yes. People will often say, yes, but you don't understand the life I've had. Mm-hmm. Well, I will tell you, oftentimes people, when they meet me, will say, I wish I had your life based mm-hmm. upon what it looks like today. Now, they don't give me the what it looks like today. And I say to them, you can have my life if you're willing to go through what I did to get here. Yeah, um, They're only seeing you know, 2022, they didn't see a life 
that had addictions present. Mm -hmm. That was a part of my life that I wish I would have rewritten. But at the same time, as you pointed out, being in that darkness gave me what I needed in order to move into the light. I had to experience the pain of that in order to reach out and say, I need help. And that is one thing that we oftentimes don't do is ask for help, that we don't have to be alone on our journey. And so I had thousands of people who were there to help when I needed it. Literally, when you look at 12-step programs, Mm -hmm. they they consist of millions of people, and it's present all over the world. And so I've taken advantage of that all over the world when I've traveled. And so that, I think, was the capstone in terms Mm -hmm. of recognizing that I needed help that I couldn't do it on my own, that began to change my whole spiritual outlook on life. And I think it's, you know, what we had talked about earlier in terms of when we are in touch with that piece of us, it really gives us the direction that we need. And, you know, you were talking about, well, talking to God. I Believe me, we've had many, many heart-to-heart conversations. <laughs> and one of my favorite <laughs> sayings to God is, God, I know you get, never give us any more than we can handle, but right now you're pushing it. So you either give me what I need to get through this, or you need to change the situation. Because right now, this is not working for me. And sure enough, something would happen, Ken. Yeah, I think he is, the faithfulness of God is legendary, as I say to people. Um This young man, uh, I believe uh, you you talk about help and seeking help. And I ha- actually had a conversation with someone a few days ago about this and how in some society uh, where you have culturally uh, people in their culture baked in, that if you seek help, you're weak, you're showing signs of weakness, you are all of those different things. And so in some culture, if you seek um, counseling of any sort, you are weak, but it is necessary in order for you to grow once you recognize it. I want you, Doc, talk to me about some of the dark places. How did you enter into those dark places? And what was the agreement that it's usually I tell people a situation will happen to us as a young person. How we interpret that situation will then usher us into a situation, into our life and the decisions that we make. Sometimes it could be a decision, a situation that takes place with our parents, other people, whatever. But something usually happens that causes us to make certain decisions, um, that internal decision, I call it, that will then govern our life. Talk to me about this young man as to what decision did he made to usher into into those dark spaces? How did you get there? And what were some of those things you had to overcome? Well, and I'm sure many of your listeners can identify with this internal message, which was that I was not good enough, Mm -hmm. that no matter what I did, I did not have a sense of worth. And the harder I tried, the more it tended to reinforce that lack of worth to the point where um, I began to look for substances in order to comfort me, to get Mm -hmm. me through that sense of lack of worthiness. And as people know, you start out small and you have some minor success with it uh, lessening the pain Mm -hmm. of those messages. And then it takes more and more and more until I found myself ensnared in an addiction that I did Mm -hmm. not see my way out of. And it's what some people refer to, Ken, as the dark night of the soul. Yes. And I was there. And so I could see no way up from the situation that I was in, and that there was only one option available to me, which is, Mm. you're not worth anything, why bother being here? Yeah. And luckily, that night, when it was the worst, I did reach out to a professional, and as a result of that, realized that if I didn't do something to turn my life around at that moment, um, there was a likelihood that I could have been institutionalized. And that got my attention. So what I did was to begin to become open to what Mm -hmm. my new choices in life were that I didn't think I had before. And as a result of all those years of working on myself 
my self-image and self-worth are very strong today. I don't question my value here and that I am here to be of service to others. We talked about this briefly before we started our program today. I, you know, when people ask about what's, what's my purpose in life, I believe that we only have one purpose. It's to be of service to others. Now, how that's going to show up is going to differ for each of us in what we do in the lives we lead. But I think ultimately that's why each of us is here. I absolutely agree with you. I think the reason why we go through the things that we go through um, is so that we can comfort those with the same type of comfort as the Bible says that we have been through. And I think that um, when we have gone through those painful times, meaning that comfort that when we speak to someone or a group of people, but when we speak to them, we are speaking with an authority that is for sure because we have gone through it. And the words that we now release from our mouth and our being are empowered with what they call faith and that energy that comes from us so that when we hold the hand of someone that is in that space, we can comfort them with the comfort that we receive, meaning that we can identify, we can empathize, we can be patient enough to allow them to, um, uh, and hate to say, make mistakes, but to fall, to stumble is a better word, to stumble. And we still hold them in that space to say, you're okay. Um, I am here with you. We are walking together. And I believe as we are living in that space of servant dom, just like I express, that person um, will feel empowered with that energy and with that space and want to know who they are and search and become as you have done, where you know for a surety who you are. And that journey of darkness, I tell people, it is where you shine. God showed up on darkness and he said, let there be. He made a uh, an internal decision based on that internal decision. He spoke out what he needed and he took the necessary steps to make it come to pass. And that's exactly what you and I have to do is to model ourselves. I've been training a corp in America that's telling me, Doc, model yourself after them. Don't don't re- don't repeat the wheel, just model yourself and you'll get the same result. So here you are, you've gone through some of your dark thing and you mentioned a few of them and where it led you and you started to seek uh, help. Talk to us, Doc, because there's a lot of people I don't want to move by here too fast. I want us to just linger here a little and uh, let those people speak to those that may that are listening may be here and want to hear that little encouragement or need to hear that little encouragement to move them through to seek the help. Talk to them a little, Doc, and explain that space and how to make that first step? Well, I think part of it, Ken, comes from the fact that we need to accept the fact that we don't have to do this alone. Yes. That there, we have so many people around us who can make a difference in the way that we look at life and that it really is about taking it one day at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, there's this thing about if I had to think about doing it for a lifetime, I'd probably never take that first step. But yeah. just asking yourself, what is the first simple step I can take? Mm-hmm. It might be just talking to a friend. Uh, for me, it meant that I had to admit that I had a problem. Yeah. I, you know, denial is a very powerful tool that we use, our brain uses, yeah. to keep us stuck where we are. And until we realize that it is not serving us well, we just continue to do what we do. You know, The in- definition of, insa- of insanity is doing what we do accepting, you know, expecting that we will have different results. Well, I never had yeah. different results as long as I was doing it on my own. So yeah. I had to reach out to others who were further along in their path than I mm-hmm. was. And uh, clearly what they would express was they're simply sharing their experience, strength, and hope. Their experience yeah. in what led them to what brought them to where they are today. 
their strength in terms of doing it one day at a time with the help mm-hmm. of others, the support, and the hope that it can be different, different for them. And for me, it's been over 30 years since I've had to deal directly with that addiction. So it is possible. At the time, yeah. I didn't think it was, but I just had to believe what others told me. And those that are listening uh, to us and you find yourself in an addiction, here is someone that uh, we are talking to that has been there. And I want you guys to reach out to Doc, um, get into his space, whether it is um, email. However, I will provide those things for you to reach him so that you can talk to him because um, our goal is that you can see who you are and that you will not have to make a decision to uh, exit this planet. But there are people, as Doc said, that are waiting and is excited and they are they have gone through. And so they will be able to assist you with the knowledge, patient, all the things that are necessary to walk you through. Doc, here you are. You've gotten, you're walking through, you're, you've surrendered and realized that you needed help. You're seeking help. Uh, and I tell people, uh, it always takes, you know, they think it happens overnight, Doc. It, uh, I went through mine for years and um, I am still uncovering things as I move through this life about incidents that happened back whenever. I am still uncovering things. So we will always in- uncover if we continue to learn who we are. Here you are, you're learning about um, these things and coming out of your situation. How, as one that um, has gained such information and knowledge, uh, and I know you must have been beaten on yourself with that low self-esteem and stuff like that. How did you, this particular thing with the low self-esteem and beginning your journey to find out who you are and not worthy, how did you begin to answer and recognize some of those valuable things as to who you truly are? Well, many times, Ken, it didn't come from within. I -hmm. had to be willing to listen to what people around me were saying about me, the fact that I had value in their lives. Mm -hmm. And the more I heard that, the more it it began to change my self-talk around that. And then I began to become aware and to acknowledge my accomplishments in life. Mm -hmm. The fact that from these humble beginnings that I had in growing up in Pittsburgh, that here I was now a highly educated man who now could go out and speak to others using his intelligence and his gifts. Mm -hmm. And so that is what led me to my current work that I do with career counseling and coaching Mm -hmm. and also doing podcasts like this. And believe me, if you had asked me even a year ago about being on a podcast, I would have said, (laughs) no way, I can't do this. (laughs) Again, it was other people telling me, yes, you can. Yes. It also led me to writing three books. And the one book that I have that I encourage people to read that is really based on what we've discussed today is called Ponderings, Daily Reflections mm-hmm. for Inspiration and Transformation. And I started writing it. It's been 12 years this month that I've been doing daily blogs, and you can access those wow. on my website. And those became the foundation for a book that I wrote, a journal, where mm-hmm. people will read the entry, and it always ends with question and the space below for people to write their thoughts. So yes. it covers acceptance, gratitude, mm-hmm. thinking, feeling, all of those various aspects of what we deal with on a daily basis in our lives. And again, who would have thought you mm-hmm. know, years ago that that's what all of this would have led to? And believe me, there's a lot of pain that is reflected upon as I do these writings because it brings up for me what I experienced that led me to write the blog for that day. Yeah, it is. um, That's one of the reasons why I I have the guests tell the people what they have today. And the reason why, because I want that picture to be painted, to see that uh, the accomplishment that they have uh, put and laid out before them. And then we take the journey, Doc, and let them see that it didn't come from someone that was whole in many ways. That person became broken, and within the brokenness of that person, they gained their healing, 
within their healing of that person, they gain their courage. Within the courage and have that person, they gain insight about them, who they are. They find their little formula or the things that they have gained, their wisdom and knowledge. They put it in a format by which now they can serve. And there is nothing like a life of servant. I want to talk to you, Doc, about um, as you moved through and you came out, as they say, where you are able to stand and you have dusted yourself off, you have gained some insight and you're able to become a student of yourself and you're no longer a slave or burden or in bondage to the things that you came out of. How did you navigate from all of that? And I know you, you, you're an author of three books, but when you wrote your first one and your second one, how did it navigate and process to writing books? How did you get there? Well, first of all, um, I never saw myself as a writer. And I had an experience <laughs> in college my freshman year, the first week of school, where I had an English teacher who made sure that I understood that I was not a writer. And so <laughs> it was choosing not to believe the story yes. that she had created for me. And I think that yes. brings us full circle back, Ken, to what you said at the beginning. It's the influences that people around us have in shaping mm -hmm. who we are. Yeah. And in our free will, and we talked about this at the beginning also, part of your free will is you can choose to focus on your brokenness or on wholeness. Mm -hmm. So it was learning how to shift my focus into yes. wholeness. So what I had to believe was that these were simply messages that people were giving me. And I mm -hmm. had a choice as to whether or not I wanted to internalize them. Mm -hmm. And when I choose, now, if it's something that's valid, absolutely, I will take it yeah. into consideration. But if there's no validity in terms of being a part of that wholeness, then I discard it. Yes. I just bless them and send them on their way because it's uh, just their opinion. That's it. It's simply their opinion. Jesus makes a statement to his disciples when he was teaching them. He says, take no thought saying. And that principle is a powerful thing. When he said, he said, take no thought. Don't agree with it. Don't take it. Don't own it. Someone can say something to you. But, you know, he says, take no thought saying. Don't say within yourself. You know what? I, I agree with them. I must be no good. I must be this. I must be that. He said, no, take no thought saying. Do not agree with that. As you stated, Doc, we are, and this is what the, the nuns were teaching you, that we have free will. And it is your, what do you want from you? And you have to make that agreement with yourself. And when you make that agreement, I call it the statement of faith, meaning that you believe it more than anybody else on this planet. Because there are going to be people that will come and tell you different from that. But you believe it so much that it will, you start on your journey and then someone will look at you and say that you, you, you're crazy, but you know it was the right thing for you to do. So you stepped out, you disagreed with the, um, her declaration of who you are and you set out to show that no to yourself, basically that I am a writer, and you began to put that. How was that process? And because um, I know the, the dance between that, um, how did you formulate your book? And what was your experience there? So the book that I referenced, the Ponderings book, um, mm -hmm. 12 years ago, someone that I knew um, shared with me the value of what I was writing. Yeah. And she said, you know, you might want to think about posting it as a daily blog hmm. on your website. And I thought, oh, I could do that. I can write a paragraph a day. And I did. Mm -hmm. And it was a commitment that I made to myself. And it was also yeah. an opportunity for me to see what my growth was spiritually. Yeah. Yes. And so after so many years, the next message came from people. You need to put this into a book. What mm -hmm. you have here is so valuable. Rather than people going to your website every day and reading it, let them go out and purchase it, have it in front of them, and I give them three options for how they can use it. I said, well, mm -hmm. you can start with page one and go all the way to the end. It's not in calendar form. 
So you don't have to start yeah. at January 1st. There are no dates attached. I said, or there might be a topic that speaks to you, one of the 10 topics. Maybe yeah. you want to start there, maybe on gratitude. Or you may do like I love to do with books, Ken. I just mm-hmm. open them randomly. And mm-hmm. whatever page shows up, that's the page that has the message of the day for me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's I do that sometimes. You can use it. And yeah. I had one friend who was doing a beta reading for me. And she said, well, I was only going to read it for a few minutes just to see what the content was like. And she said, after three hours, I had to put it down. <laughs> now, that was just the beta, you know, the, the rough draft. She said, this yeah. really touches the, the soul of humanity in terms of what we experience in life. Those that are listening to us, that book is Pondering. And uh, those are excellent topics, some of the topics that Dr. talked about, and I'm sure it houses much more. And uh, I suggest you guys get your hands on his books so that you can see. I always say to, to people, Doc, about an author when you're with the book, is that you're having a private conversation with that author. And you are having a one-on-one experience. Sit down, and uh, uh, you don't have to pay a lot of money for that VIP treatment, I tell people, because that energy is still there within those words. And when you read it and your belief system grav- gravitates to some of those stories, whatever it, it needs, it will pull it out and it will come off of those pages. It will drop into you and it will produce an outcome. So I tell everyone, get out and get Doc's book pondering because I'm going to get me a copy of it as well because I love books like that, Doc, that makes me, um, I read about something and then I have to think about it, to meditate, as the scripture says, meditate on it day and night so that I can pull out the truths and the revelations to guide me through. So I want to make sure that everyone hears about that book. He has two other books. Get them so that you can gain some insight. As you are here and the first book, and again, I love that topic and the type of uh, uh, articles that you have in there, a different truth, as you said, about uh, gratitude. And those are powerful truths uh, that someone has to learn in their life, to be um, thankful for all that you have, to live in a space of thankfulness, of gratitude. It will take your mind and lift it to another place and open your spirit to receive if you're able to live in a space of gratitude. Um, and uh, that expectation is a beautiful thing. Talk to me, Doc, about one of your um, one of your uh, clients. I don't even want to say that. One of the folks that were in your space that um, as you were able to counsel them and guide them as to who they are, when they began to, as they say, get it, and you are in this precious space where they are seeing it and the joy that is deep within you begins to rise as you're looking into those eyes as those person is just this awakening is happening. And that particular moment is one of the most priceless, precious uh, uh, moment on the planet that two people can experience. Talk to me as to when you can identify and remember one person that were able to make that connection. Well, believe it or not, Ken, that just happened yesterday. So I <laughs> have been working, I was working, I have been working with a client for mm-hmm. a number of years. And uh, remember, this is not counseling. This is more coaching. She is employed, yeah. uh, very successful. And I remember our early sessions were filled with tears on her part. So Mm -hmm. she would talk about something that she was dealing with at work, and it Mm -hmm. would bring up all of these, you know, it's the imposter syndrome, it's, um, I don't know what I'm doing, why am I here, all of those questions that I'm sure people can relate to. What I've seen in her is this Mm -hmm. transformation into Mm -hmm. this powerful, self-confident woman Mm -hmm. who knows what she's doing. And does yeah. an incredible job of it. So that is my role as a coach, is to yes. constantly point out those small steps, those changes that they are taking that have caused that evolution within them. And I, I have goosebumps just sharing mm-hmm. that right now. 
And, um, you know, I'm there to ask the questions, the hard questions yes. that help that move them along. But yeah. they're willing to take that information and take action on it and then report yes. back on what worked, what didn't work. It doesn't always work. I'll often use the word experiment. Would you like to experiment with this? If it's yeah. not working, we, you know, take it off the table and we try something else. But I think that the key to all of this is people who are open to possibility. Yes. It's when we close ourselves off from that, that we don't see the growth that we're here to experience. And so again, it's back to that willingness that people can have. And so I see what I observe in her and so many of my other clients. Part mm -hmm. of it is giving them permission to be human. Yes. Saying, well, what am I doing wrong? And I said, maybe you're not doing anything wrong. Maybe you're just not in the right environment to do what you're mm -hmm. doing. And when they are willing to make that shift, they say, I'm so much happier. Yeah. It's just, you know, the square peg in the round hole. I yeah. said, my job is to get the square peg into the square. <laughs> yes, it's the, the job of, of, I call you guys more so guides as well. I think uh, Jesus put it this way. He said, um, you know, that uh, those who have ears, let them hear. And that to me means that there is a responsibility that is placed upon the hearer that uh, you need to prepare yourself to be ready to hear and challenge yourself to um, to move forward in whatever this hearing is about. And as you, as a guide uh, that knows the question to ask them, because, you know, we most people are so busy running around in their life that they are not aware that they can even ask these questions of themselves. And so when someone like yourself is there and they're seeking help and uh, bring to light those questions. As you said, it helps them to move forward. Um, I remember one time this uh, uh, lady was telling me about a, a client that she had, and she told them about, you know, you can do this. And the lady said, I didn't know I could. And I thought that was such a profound um, revelation that many of them did, don't know that they could. Um, and so that's why there are folks like you there. Guys, you're listening to us, and he is here to help, and he's here to serve. I like that word better. And I want you guys to get in touch with Doc so that he can be of a servant to you, to be able to help you, assist you, and serve you in a way for you to become who you are. Doc, I want you to talk to them and uh, encourage the folk as to that, but never giving up, because mon many of them are in dark places and they feel there is no way out. I want you just to encourage someone as we are winding down on our conversation about um, just being uh, pushing forward and not allowing the darkness to keep them stagnant. Talk to them about some of those tools even of verses as well as getting help that they can utilize to um, move them forward. Well, Ken, there are so many resources available to people. Um, yeah. Again, it's first recognizing that you do need help, that what you've been trying up to this point has not been working in the way that you would want it to, and then taking that one small step to getting to the other side. Um, it's not an easy journey getting to the other side, as both of us know. Mm -hmm. We both probably still struggle with some aspects of oh, yeah. those demons in our <laughs> lives. But the thing I is... Do. We don't give them the power that we used to. Yeah. And I think that is a big part of it, is learning how to take that back and recognizing that you don't do it by yourself yeah. and that there is hope, that there have been others who have faced similar situations in their lives who have gone over to the other side of living the life they are here to live. Because I don't think that we are here to live a life of suffering and pain. I don't think that was ever the intention of our birth. Same. But yes. as you were pointing out earlier, it's to experience the joy that life has yeah. to bring. And my life today is so filled with joy. Um, I, the one suggestion I have to people, they may not be there right now, but it worked for me. I read a book once, and the author suggested that you have 
101 wishes, just like Aladdin. And so mm-hmm. I wrote each of those wishes on an index card. And one of them was, you know, going to the Great Wall of China. Well, not only did I go to the Great Wall of China, mm-hmm. which, you know, millions of people have done, how many of you have actually had dinner on the Great Wall of China? Yeah. <laughs> it was served to us and it was totally unexpected. It was a sit down wow. dinner. And I thought, mm-hmm. this is just one of the many miracles in my life that are not so much miracles. They are just the manifestation of living the life that we are here to live. Yes, I agree with everything you said. And I almost had, um, I had a uh, schedule. Um, a friend of mine was taking me to breakfast on uh, the Great Wall and um, COVID came and redirected that. But my my desire is to go back and get there and do that. Uh, so I... Uh, I envy your your dinner because I I can't wait until <laughs> I get there to see it. Uh, Doc, I want to thank you for coming to Threads of Enlightenment. This has been absolutely an enlightenment uh, for me personally. As you share your story, I have gained some insight in my life as well. And I want to thank you for coming to us and sharing your journey and your wisdom with us. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me, and I wish only the best to all of your listeners. Thank you, Don.